Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the likelihood of a tropical storm here in the Gulf of Mexico. The likelihood is increasing of this, so we're going to talk all about that throughout this video. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what is the maximum intensity you think this one gets to? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get into this video. And we're going to be taking a look at what NOAA has to say first things first from the National Hurricane Center. Two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and look at that. 40% chance of this one developing there uh, down in Central America within the next 48 hours. So we're really seeing a, a big likelihood of this one developing very shortly uh, on the Pacific side, however. Now for your five-day uh, graphical tropical weather outlook, you can see they are expecting this one to move over Central America, over Mexico, and into the Gulf of Mexico, and then developing somewhere in that area. There's a 50% chance at this point, which is a pretty good chance. That's what we call moderate, so the chances are increasing, because just yesterday we only saw it in the yellow zone. Uh, so we're really seeing this begin to increase. Uh, and the models are very confident that this one will develop, or especially our European model, which I'll show you guys in just a minute. So we're about to move on and we're going to take a look at those tropical depression probabilities on the European model, the tropical storm probabilities, and the hurricane probabilities. So here we are looking at those tropical depression probabilities and look at that in that red area. This is for June 1st through June 4th. This is where we see the most probabilities. So this is going to be tomorrow through June 4th. And you can see 90 to 100% chance of a tropical depression forming in that red zone. So this model is very, very confident that we will be seeing tropical activity here of some sort. Look at the tropical storm probabilities. In that orange shade, that's where we have 80 to 90% chance of at least a tropical storm, which would break our record for fastest time to three tropical storms, I believe. So uh, that's what I was hearing at least. So that's very cool to see that we would be breaking records here. And then look, uh, as we look at day five, or sorry, yeah, day five to day eight, which is going to be June 5th through June 8th, you can see we do have a 20 to 30% chance of hurricane development here from the European model so far. And those chances could go up or down or all around, I don't know. But as of right now, there is a chance for hurricane development according to this model. And this is the first time so far this year that I have seen this model show probabilities of a hurricane so that's very interesting to note that this has our most chance so far according to this model to see hurricane development and i have to agree actually so we're about to move on and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at those spaghetti models you probably have seen spaghetti models before but we're really just going to be able to see a graph of where all of the individual models show these this storm going All right, so here we are taking a look, and you can see that most of these models actually just take it over Central America, over Mexico, and that's the one thing they're confident in, but it really stalls out once it reaches there in Mexico. A lot of these models only, or I think all of them, actually, no, 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 only some of them go out to 120 hours there, uh, and that's why I think it stops as they reach the very, very southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico right there. A lot of them have it heading northward, though. Uh, and that's interesting to note as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of our ensemble models, like our GFS ensemble model, our European ensemble model, and there's even a Canadian ensemble model. You just don't see it get used a lot because it's not very good. Uh, but we're going to take a look at all of those and have a look at what their individual uh, models are thinking. Here's the GEFS, which again is the GFS ensemble model. And this is, you can see all the members on the right there. There's uh, AP0 through AP, I think, 20, and then there's a couple extra ones down there as well. Uh, and you can see that this basically actually agrees mostly with the the models we saw before. It has it get reaching that very southern region of the Gulf of Mexico and then really stalling out. But you can see a lot of them actually have it heading northward and hitting some of the states in the United States. Uh, and I see a lot of people on our Facebook group, Weather Freaks, you can join that, by the way, in the pinned comment. But I see a lot of people saying things like, Oh, is it going to hit here? Is it going to hit here? Is it going to hit here? And I see it in other places too. We don't know because take a look at this. 
We are just beginning to see confidence that it's going to reach the southern Gulf of Mexico. And then we have some showing Texas, some showing Louisiana, and then one showing Florida there. So we have absolutely no idea as far as impacts for the United States. All we know is there's a chance that it could hit anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico coast of the United States. What we're going to do is we're about to move on. We're going to look at that European ensemble model and then the Canadian ensemble model. And then we're going to take a look at what the GFS model has to say as far as uh, wind and the track of this one. And then also we're going to take a look at the Canadian model a little bit. And then we're going to get into the total rainfall as of right now. All right. So here's the European ensemble model, and this one is more intense, obviously, as you can see. Uh, same story. Has it kind of tracking around in the right offshore in the Pacific side of the Central America region, and then it ends up in the southern Gulf of Mexico. However, this model has many, many models reaching the United States, but notice only Louisiana and Texas. That's the only area it has with a chance of impact here, which is kind of interesting to note. Uh, the colors do actually make a difference here. So uh, what we're taking a look at is green is anywhere from 1,000 to 1,010 millibars. So a pretty uh, weak low pressure system. Blue is anywhere from about 1,000 to 990, so somewhere in that range. And then I think orange is anywhere from 950 to 990 millibars, if I'm correct. Actually, I think it's uh, to 980 there with the blue. Uh, but we see that a lot of these intensify further as they head north. So if we see this one just kind of linger around in the Gulf of Mexico down there south, it probably won't intensify too far. However, if it does start tracking north towards our Gulf, Gulf states, that's where it could really become a hurricane and really begin to intensify. That's what we're taking a look at. And this model is definitely thinking that that's going to make a huge difference with the intensity as well as it gets more time over the ocean if it heads northward. All right, now here's your... Uh, Canadian ensemble model and same story heads into the southern Gulf of Mexico and this one's kind of like the GFS ensemble model where it has it hitting like any Gulf state all over the place uh, but this one doesn't have it intensifying too far yet 980 is the minimum I'm seeing right now so that's still pretty intense though and would probably be a category one hurricane however the European model is much much more confident in a much lower low pressure system all right, now we're about to move on. We're going to take a look at some of those uh, models and how they feel about the total wind and also the total rainfall. And then we're going to get into our comment of the day. Now, since confidence is increasing, I'm almost positive I'm going to be making many, many videos about this storm as it's probably the most intense thing going on. I do have my June forecast coming up on June 1st, which is tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. But outside of that, I think we're mostly going to be talking about this tropical storm for the most part. Let's take a look at what the GFS has to say. Uh, it's going to start out there to the north, I guess the northern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula there with some pretty strong winds, actually. 40 to 50 knot winds there being picked up. And then by June 8th, it's going to move more towards the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, heading straight for Texas here on our GFS model. The GFS model is not like the GFS Ensemble model. This isn't multiple members. This is just a single model uh, projection. So the Ensemble model is going to be much more useful. But I like this one because we can see what potential impacts would look like. And then it reaches Texas as a 999 millibar low pressure system. Uh, so this one does have it hitting the United States. And here's your Canadian model. Pretty much starts out on the same area, just a little more intense to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, with some greens and yellow showing up, which again is about 34 to maybe 50 knot winds. Not really a strong hurricane or anything, but definitely a tropical storm at least. Uh, so let's go ahead and see where this one heads. And it heads straight north, and it's a 993 millibar low pressure system. Now by this point, heading towards Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Uh, and then that was by June 5th. Now by time we reach the very early morning hours on June 6th, you can see this one is basically hitting Louisiana actually. Uh, as a 997 millibar low pressure system. Let's go ahead and take a look at what those total rainfall amounts could potentially look like with the two different outcomes these models show. And here's the Canadian one first off. 
Anywhere in the blues, we're looking at a half inch to two inches of rain. Anywhere in the purples, we're looking at two to six inches of rain. And anywhere in those red and gold colors, we're looking at six to 24 inches of rain. So a lot. The yellow is indicating higher amounts. And you can see that we have widespread pinks throughout the southeast coast. Uh, and then we have some of those uh, reds and yellows kind of making their way into Louisiana and Mississippi. This is only by June 9th. So this is only in the next 10 days. So if we were to get 10 inches plus, which it's showing for Louisiana there, that would be a lot of rainfall. So this one could be a giant rainmaker here. And then here's the GFS model, which again showed it hitting actually Texas and Louisiana. And take a look at that. Same, co same color codings with the numbers. But we're seeing a lot more yellows and golds make their way onto Texas, Louisiana, uh, and I think we're picking up, I mean, that looks like maybe 12 to 24 inches of rain there for Louisiana. That would be a ton. And we better hope that doesn't happen because that would cause major, major flooding issues. All right, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you think June's going to go for your area? And Derek Everything said, I think June in my area will bring average temperatures. And look, I really think a lot of areas are going to have average temperatures this June. But this is what you need to remember about average temperatures. Average temperatures could mean colder than normal conditions for the first 15 days and then warmer nor than normal conditions for the last 15 days. That would meet at about average, but in the earlier portion, it wouldn't feel average. And in the later portion, it wouldn't feel average, but overall it would end up being average. That's always important to remember about temperature forecasts. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.